I've had an idea. Not very bright, is it? So I thought I'd make one. Often not when I wander around, I'll see an object or something, and I think, oh, I've got to try and do that and make that on the lathe. It's just really interesting. And for some reason, I spot a light bulb once when I was just moving stuff around the house, and I thought, yeah, that will make a really nice project to make. But I just don't want to just make a light bulb. I want to turn it into some form of a box. I'll start off with a piece of oak. And I think it was something like about three and a half inch square. Turn between centers just to round it down to size. Put a tenon on the end, mount it into the chuck jaws, and then start attaching down to the, the size that I wanted for the light bulb. Use the skew for that, not for any particular reason, just it's great fun, great practice just to use the skew on something like this. I then marked out really what were all the main points for the light bulb where I needed to start taking measurements from and having the light bulb at hand just holding up to the work all the time made life so so much easier. You've always got something there physically to work from and compare. What I did was I, where I sort of like marked all these measurement points, I then took them down to that width and then I could then just do all the curves. Once I'd really got the bottom end of the light bulb done, I could measure the depth of it, how far I needed to do, and I could just drill out a hole. Then it was on with the hollowing tools. Now, this is probably where I made my mistake and I always sort of like seemed to push myself to the limits and I was looking to use the hook tool to try and get around the edges. So constantly taking measurements, starting, stopping, blowing out all the wood shavings and everything like that and just double checking sort of how things fit in and all of a sudden there it was, the hooked hollowing tool got a catch and that was the result of what happened. Now, I wasn't going to give up on this. We had family staying with us for a few days, so I didn't get much opportunity to get back out into the workshop again. Straight away, I came out, cut a very similar sized piece of oak, straight back onto the lathe and repeated the whole process all over again. Now, just a tip here, when you put a tenon on a piece of work like this and you want to support it, while it's in the jaws with the, with the headstock and a live centre. Switch the lathe on first so you spin the lathe up before you really bring the live centre in because what you'll find is that often than not the centre point of your piece where the live centre will sit will not necessarily be in exactly the same place as it was when you had it turned between centres. One interesting thing I did find out about when I was doing this project is that when I was kept taking the measurements from the light bulb, the light bulbs are not actually fully round. If you actually span the light bulb round while you had it in your calipers, you'd find that the, there was either it would either nip tight because it was a bit wider in one place, or it would just there would be gaps. More or less back to where I was before, hollowing tools out again, and this time I am just sticking with this straight hollowing tool, trying to get as much into the side as I possibly could. Once I've got literally all the bottom half hollowed out, it's I did just sort of shape the top half as much as I could, then went round and finished off the, the inside hollowing. After that, sanded it down, I think, to probably something like 240 grit, something like that. Um, used the tail stocks for support where I possibly could. And I didn't really want to do all this. I wanted it freestanding so that I could sand the whole thing up fully properly. So that's why I parted it off, created a jam chuck. And to start with, it was just a little bit too wobbly. Trying to sand off that nub, 
I ended up taking it to my pillar drill with a sanding disc on there. Then I could get it back onto the jam chuck, finish off the sanding, sanding sealer, Yorkshire grit. As another tip there, with Yorkshire grit, you really do need to give this as much time as you would do your normal sanding. Literally with the lathe spinning up, let it run for probably two, three minutes before you then start speeding the lathe up too much and buffing it all off. For a finish, I mean, I've had these literally since I started turning, I've got some beeswax sticks and I thought, oh, that will just make a nice change. And once I've done the beeswax stick and buffed it all off, I thought, well, that's quite nice. Now perhaps I'll use my canuba wax. It really was nice to use something simple and basic for a change. For the actual base, which will be the end cap of the light bulb, this was actually the same piece of wood which I'd made the, the main light bulb out of. Gonna be no issues about worrying about the grain or anything. So once I've got it down to the required size, hollowed out a sort of like a cup in the end for the actual light bulb just to push into. I just wanted this as a fairly tight fit, sort of like when you just pushed it shut. Marked out how all the threads are going to be, and you'll see here the first time I just wasn't happy with the measurements. So sanded off, and I think this is actually about three attempts before I got this right. And I found that the threads I needed to do about a four mil gap. And the good thing about that four mil is that every quarter turn you can then move that across one millimeter at a time. So it's quite easy just to draw the rest of the lines in. For actually carving out the threads, I use my rotary tool. I went through various different rotary tool bits uh, before I was happy with what I got. And what I found with doing this, especially with oak, don't try and rush it and take too much out of it at once. Just let it just take out small pieces as you work your way around. Once I've got all the threads effectively done and I start turning off the bottom round a bit, I then suddenly looked at it and I thought, well, this just doesn't look right. Because the actual thread should be raised, I therefore then needed to just finish off shaping around the bottom further. Once that done, created yet another jam chuck just to put that on so I could finish the end cap off. And as you'll see there, first bit I put on, even we held on the kitchen roll, just flew straight off the lathe. So cut another piece on and that one held. Always trying to work towards the actual headstock on here so that it doesn't pop off again. Took down the shape I wanted. Bit more manual sanding and once I was happy with what I'd got there. For the black part, I just used my ebonizing solution, let it dry, and then I went onto the silver gilt cream. Now this is actually quite thick stuff, and it doesn't go on too easily on something like this where you're trying to be fairly delicate. And I do know that there is a thinner you can get to thin this down, but I persevered, just took me time, and I think this whole process probably took me about 10, 15 minutes to give this all a proper covering. And once that was done, just left it for 24 hours and gave it a coat of matte spray varnish. Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Uh, yeah, great fun little project to do. Uh, I thought about this a few days ago and had family up and not had any chance to do it. Well, I tell a lie, I came out here on the first day they came up here when they all went to the cinema and that was my first attempt and I was using the hooked hollowing tool, got a catch, and that's what happened. I wasn't going to leave it there. I was determined to have a go, and that's what I come up with. And I have basically used the silver gilt cream for the silver here, uh, just ebonized the oak, and it's a light box. So a great, great fun project, and I think really after after doing all the spheres it's doing these curves just so so much easy and i've got to say it's fairly well identical probably the top could just be a little bit more rounded off but 
I've got to say, that I am really pleased with. So the whole thing made out of one piece of oak, hollowed out, and then just obviously the end cap made separately. The walls, I mean, I'm guessing are probably five to 10 mil thick in there throughout. So it's fairly well light, uh, which especially since it's oak as well. For finish wise, I really didn't know what to go for. And I looked on my shelf and for a change, I thought I've got these wa these wax sticks and the Canuba wax sticks. And I thought I'd give them a go for a change. So it's been sat in the workshop for the last two or three days while this piece was drying off. And so therefore it's just got a bit dusty and everything again. So I could just do a little bit of a buff up and it should be fine. The only other thing I did do on the actual threaded part here is I gave it a coat of matte spray varnish as well. Uh, because otherwise this silver gilt cream, um, I only did it yesterday, so it, otherwise you'll probably find it would sort of flake off a little bit. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you on the next project video.